W220 motors got very good. The main M112-M113 line for him is perhaps the main strength of the car. But you need to monitor the health of the cooling system. Expansion tanks traditionally crack because Mercedes does not know that their shape should be simple, ideally spherical. The best air filters should be installed here. All motors are with Locosil and Alusil, and these coatings are very afraid of dust and dirt. And in general, motors love affection and quality service, and, as I recently found out, they don't like to light the check engine even if one of the cylinders fails, trying to behave like Japanese engines, not to remind owners of problems while the car is still driving. Motors M112 and M113 are structurally as similar as possible. These are 6 and 8 cylinder V engines with a camber of 90 degrees. The W220 was equipped with 6 cylinder M112 E28 with 204 horsepower, S280, M112 E32 for 224 horsepower, S320, and after restyling M112 E37 for 245 horsepower, S250. 8 cylinders are M113 E43 with 279 horsepower, S430, M113 E50 for 306 horsepower, S500, M113 E55 for 360 horsepower, AMG S55, and compressor M113 E55 ML for 500 horsepower, S55 AMG restyling. The 6s have a balance shaft in the collapse, and the 8s just have a gear. The crankshaft of the six-cylinder is the so-called split, so the sound and traction are excellent. Structurally, these are all aluminum motors with locusil liners, it's almost like a lucil, but there is more silicon in the composition and the surface hardness is higher, but also brittleness. Aluminum cylinder head, three valves per cylinder, and two spark plugs. The timing drive is a chain, double row chain, there are no phase regulators. Intake manifold with dampers for changing geometry, they have a vacuum drive. There are a few design flaws. First of all, increased oil consumption due to low ring preload is often criticized. This, in a good way, is not even a disadvantage with such a volume of oil, you can afford an extra liter of consumption from replacement to replacement. But the cylinders with such a preload really do not wear out, and if the engine eats 2 to 3 liters per 10,000, this is not a cause for concern. In addition, part of the oil is lost through a fairly simple VKG and valve seals. In this case, there is practically no carbon deposits on the piston group, and this is not a problem. It is the leakage through the gland of the exhaust valve and leaks through the glands to the outside that most often cause the first serious problems and a jump in oil consumption. With an increase in oil consumption to 0.5 per thousand, you need to check if there is carbon deposits in the piston group and if there are any scuffs, and at the same time check the condition of the catalysts, they do not live long at this consumption and quickly crumble. Soot Intake manifold leaks due to broken dampers, dirt in the intake due to rare filter changes, or the installation of cheap consumables can still lead to scuffing. Here they do not develop as fast as on a Lucille, but the technology is essentially the same, and the problem can only be corrected with a sleeve, since there are no repair sizes for motors. Rather, in theory, Locosil and Alusil are sharpened, and the surface is etched or treated with special brushes, but in practice, no one does this. Interruptions in ignition can also be noted from frequent problems. It is difficult to change the lower candles. This is often neglected, especially on cylinders near the engine shield. Otherwise, these are very successful engines, which can often be found with runs over 500 and in excellent shape. Their example shows why manufacturers switch to a Lucil technology with such enthusiasm. By the time the problematic M272 M273 series appeared, Mercedes had 20 years of experience in operating engines with similar sleeve hardening technology from the M117 to M113 series, and everywhere the result was excellent. The compressor versions of the M113 motors have their own characteristics. So, an increase in working pressure causes a slight swelling of the liners at runs of 300 plus, and at the initial stage, without surface wear and scuffing. This causes an increase in oil appetite and the appearance of a progressive chafing on the loaded side of the cylinder. 
When operating with detonation, scuffing on such motors is quite common. The AMG version with a volume of 5.4 liters is, by and large, as simple and convenient to use as a regular one, and if the resource is less, then most likely because the loads on it were much higher. You can read more about the problems of this line of motors in the reviews of the E-Class W211 and W210. The 12-cylinder engines of the M137 line with a volume of 5.8 liters and the AMG version with a volume of 6.3, which appeared in 1999, are very similar to the versions of the M112 slash M113 engines that are maximally compressed in terms of the size of the piston group, but in terms of components they are no longer compatible with them. This was done because the engine was made as compact as possible, and 12 cylinders were needed more for prestige than for high power. Therefore, they have a reduced center-to-center -center cylinder distance, and while maintaining the general design with three valve cylinder heads and locus aligners, and maintaining a timing belt without phase regulators, all elements had to be made more compact. At the same time, it was necessary to change the ignition system by installing a single ignition module on each cylinder head. Since the degree of forcing is low, the engines themselves differ little in reliability from the 8-cylinder M113, the resource as a whole is even higher, but the ignition modules, each with 12 candles, turned out to be superbly capricious. Used is three to four times cheaper, but this is a very delicate device, so buying a used version is associated with significant risks. With any power surges, lighting starts on the residuals of energy in the battery or connecting a powerful consumer, the flute may fail. And she is afraid of condensation and overheating. Now the repair of ignition modules has been established and approximately 80% of modules can be reanimated after a breakdown. The engines of the M275 line and the M275E55 variants with a volume of 5.5 liters and a power of 500 forces and the AMG version of the M275E60 with a volume of 6 liters and a power of 612 forces, which are occasionally found on the most recent W220, differ from the classic M137 in two points. They no longer have locusal sleeves, but an elusal block and they still have two turbines. The operating temperature actually became higher, and teases appeared. In past motor lines, this is more of an accident, the result of a maintenance error, overheating, and similar problems. In the M275, teases appear almost inevitably. With runs over 200, the chances of meeting an unloaded engine are greatly reduced. It is difficult to sleeve a very compact block, the chances of an error are very high, but there are successful examples of such work. In general, this is a much more capricious and expensive engine option to maintain. But they put it on Maybach if it warms your soul. OM613 slash OM648 engine range on S320D 197 and 204 horsepower. These are classic inline sixes from Mercedes Benz in a very similar cylinder block and with common rail fuel equipment. The main problems are also common, burnouts of washers under the nozzles and sticking of both nozzles and glow plugs, not very reliable wiring to the DPKV, fuel equipment failures. The electric turbine actuator on the OM648 line provides better response, but breaks more often than the pneumatics on the OM613. In general, these are very reliable engines, and most of the problems are associated either with airing the fuel line due to cracking hoses and fittings, or with poor maintenance. Well, I already wrote about the 4-liter diesel V8 of the OM628 series for the S400D in the review of the Mercedes M-Class. In short, you need to stay away from this motor as far as possible. Here, the cylinder head is unsuccessful in design, prone to cracking, a weak piston group, in which the pistons break, and in general the motor is very capricious. Installing the cylinder head from OM629 does not solve all problems, even the stock version requires the installation of an EGT controller and individual sensors for each cylinder, otherwise the cylinder head and pistons will not withstand. With the brakes on the W220, Everything is generally good, the main thing is not to confuse the terms ABS, ABC, and SBC. This car has ABS and works fine. 
The infamous SBC system is not yet available, it will only be installed on the E-Class W211. But ABC is not about brakes at all, it's about the active body control electrohydraulic suspension. It is related to the brakes only by the fact that some of the sensors are common, and in case of problems, the emergency bulbs light up together in a garland. Why they scold ABC's section below? Well, there are almost no complaints about the brakes. It is necessary to monitor the safety of the highways, the tubes on half of the cars have already been replaced, and on the other half they should be replaced, since there are already swellings. The original steel tubes from Mercedes are rather weak. Brake hoses, as a rule, if not changed, then all cracked. Calipers and discs do not cause much trouble if you do not drive hard. Front calipers will almost always be four-piston, quite reliable. The only exception is the top version of the S65 AMG, which is suddenly a single-piston design with a floating caliper, but also very strong. The rims are large, from 312 mm on the S320 to 345 mm on the AMG versions. They are often driven by overheating and temperature fluctuations. Behind, two large discs from 300 mm, and the mechanism is always single piston. The handbrake system is also implemented as reliably as possible using a drum mechanism inside the rotor foot drive with a pedal and a release handle american style it is probably possible to break the parking brake but much more often it turns sour due to lack of use abs is quite problem free breakdowns are mainly associated with sensors master rings and hub play fortunately the sound insulation is good this may not be heard control units if anything are available secondhand at reasonable prices what is air suspension? You probably know. This is when, instead of springs, air springs with a swap circuit are used as elastic elements. This allows for a nonlinear damping response and bypasses many of the problems of conventional springs and springs. And at the same time adjust the height and stiffness in a wide range, reduce rolls and many more useful things, from squatting to facilitating the replacement of wheels. And in general, everyone knows that this is a rather troublesome system on older machines. In the case of the W220, stereotypes do not lie, it is indeed relatively problematic. The situation is complicated by the fact that for this machine the normal air suspension is the base one. Cars with springs were not produced in principle. Well, the top end configurations had the active ABC suspension mentioned above. Initially, the pneumatics on this body were very good, quite successful cylinders, a compressor of a standard design, which later migrated to all cars with pneumatics from Land Rover to BMW. There are no special design flaws in the laying of highways and setting up the system, except for quite minor ones. Thus, the filter on the compressor turned out to be quite weak, which led to its clogging and death. The valve block also became dirty from the outside quite easily, and the valve parts suffered due to electrochemical corrosion accidentally of poorly selected galvanic pairs of metals. All this spoiled the impression of the system, even while it was relatively new. The result is a rapid decline in prices on the secondary market, pneumatics are considered problem number two here after a corroded body, and the unprofitability of quality service. In general, a vicious circle. Now pneumatics are not so expensive to maintain. Once upon a time, prices started at 50000 for a sleeve, aka a balloon, and from 90 for a used rack as a whole, which pretty much crippled the ranks of the fans. Today, the prices are such that the bulkhead of the suspension of other Ziguli may be more expensive in terms of the same mileage. If there is wear on the valve, shock absorber, stem and fittings, then replacing the assembly is a good way out. But air suspension is not only racks. When air escapes, it is often not the cylinder that is to blame, but rather the strut fittings, including the brass fitting on top, the top seals, valve seals, and, of course, the valve blocks. A can of soap bubbles is kept in the trunk of the owner of the 220 not because he loves children, but because it is convenient to use a soap solution to identify leaks. And, most likely, if you buy a 220, you will also have to get this children's toy. 
You can even sort out the valve blocks yourself, it's not difficult, but the result without a stand is not guaranteed. You can buy Chinese ones, half of them even work well, and the price is quite reasonable. In China, both the compressor working group, the piston, and the cylinder, the so-called head, are purchased. Reliability will be noticeably lower than that of the original, but the prices are ridiculous, and this is usually better than buying used copies with unknown mileage, especially considering that the old original is three times more expensive than the new China. Body position sensors and wiring to shock absorber sensors and valves also break down due to moisture, dirt, and age and contribute to increased suspension failure rates. It often turns out that a complete restoration of a pneumatic system costs more than the entire machine. If a hydropneumatic ABC was installed from the factory, then the prices for literally everything increase by about three times. The shock absorber here is a fully controllable design that can change both height and stiffness, as well as retract and stretch. Structurally, the rack is more complicated than the ordinary pneumatic one by an order of magnitude. The resource is initially quite acceptable, approximately 80 to 150,000, depending on the roads and maintenance, but the mileage of the cars is almost certainly many times higher. The pump here is double circuit, providing pressure both in the ABC and in the power steering. It is quite reliable, it has its own separate filters for the power steering and ABC circuits, it is almost nowhere with regular fluid changes, the main thing is to prevent their levels from dropping and contamination. But on older machines, even this node can be a problem. Leaks are fairly common. The racks are leaking, as are the hydraulic lines to them, and the pressure sensors. The system is quite hot and the oil will corrode the hoses over the years. Therefore, they begin to compress an ordinary hose on clamps or in a hydraulic service. But the oil temperature is often more than 100 degrees, so such a collective farm does not live very long. Therefore, if you do not want to spend money on the original, then you need to look for resistant to hot oil. This is more expensive, but not as expensive as OEM. In general, if the budget for servicing the pneumatic W220 can still be kept within reasonable limits, then the service of hydropneumatic versions is simply insanely expensive, even if you use some workaround technologies. It makes sense to do this if you have a lot of extra money, and the car was bought not for 200000 in a half-corp state, but for at least 500 to 600 is fairly well maintained and does not have a bunch of problems then you will only have to maintain the system in working condition. Well, if we are talking about a dead specimen, then it is worth considering the installation of springs. There are ready-made kits for the W220. You can also choose a kit from elements from the 210, 211, or 140 bodies. True, a car that originally had an ABC suspension, not every service will undertake to remake it for springs. The fact is that, along with the elastic elements, the bearing arms will also have to be changed. They differ in the installation location of the rack support. Interestingly, pneumatic levers, you can put springs on them, are inexpensive, but hydropneumatic ones are under 100,000. What is nice about this is that all silent blocks for both types of levers are replaceable. The rubber bands on the upper and lower control arms can also be changed to factory standard ones, but the ball joints officially cannot be changed separately. The rear suspension is more complicated. Structurally, it is still the same 5 link as on the W201, W124, and other legends, but the arms are different, stronger, and very expensive, and there are no replaceable bushings on them. However, some fit from the 210th body, some from the 140th. In general, if you wish, you can pick up original elements. There is no need to be afraid of the 5 lever, it has enough resources and at the same time provides excellent smoothness. The latter, by the way, plays a cruel joke on it, some owners stop slowing down altogether on bumps. A system with a conventional rail and conventional power steering. The resource of all elements is more than 200,000, but the power steering pump on a Mercedes is prone to leaks at the junction with the tank and howl. The reason is in the design of the tank itself and the filter in it. Power steering fluid should be changed more often. Practice shows that it is not necessary to cast a fabulously expensive original. 
particularly economical housekeepers, when the pump fails, change it to an analog from Schneider. The rack is moderately reliable if the suspension has not been damaged and the tires are not very low profile and wide then it will last a long time after 250 to 300 there is usually a slight play and leaks are extremely rare and mostly the tubes leak due to corrosion the bulk of the cars are rear wheel drive and they don't have any special problems the rear gearbox is solid if you don't miss the oil and don't pull trailers, it's unlikely to come to someone's mind on the S-Class, but what if? Card and shafts can play, but there are no problems with the bulkhead, the hinges are accessible and change easily. With runs over 200, that is, for 90% of cars, it makes sense to regularly monitor the backlash of the gearbox and rear CV joints. All-wheel drive vehicles have additional problems with the intermediate shaft bearings in the engine crankcase. They serve 120 to 180,000 before cranking or howling and very often turn sour in the seat. As a result, when replacing the drive, the engine crankcase is broken. As a result, crankcases are now in short supply. Cheap used ones have long been chosen. Cars with manual gearboxes come across on the roads but this is the result of non-factory manipulations. Funny specimens come across, for example, with a compressor V8M113 and an MCP, a kind of sleeper, the main advantage of which is the ability to surprise neighbors downstream. At the other extreme, cars from the south, where the diesel S320 received a manual transmission because the automatic transmission was broken after 500,000 mileage. But in real life, you are unlikely to find such a car for sale, and even more so, you are unlikely to accidentally buy it. We were very lucky with the W220 automatics. Basically, the car is found with a very reliable 5-speed automatic transmission of the 722.6 series. However, in recent years of production with 5-liter engines, they also installed a new 7-speed 722.9, which just does not differ in reliability. But first things first. Boxes 722.6, aka 5G Tronic, were the first fully electronically controlled Mercedes box with forced blocking of the gas turbine engine. The design largely inherits the 5-speed 722.5, but there were some surprises. The most unpleasant problem was encountered on cars manufactured before 99. The bushing of the K2 drum broke under load. Then the drum itself broke, and the vibrations of the shafts and shavings finished off almost everything. Nowadays, boxes with a problematic bushing are almost never found, except that on cars with engines up to 3.2 liters, with some luck, they could survive to this day. On 5 liter and more powerful ones, the bushing was most likely replaced with a bearing in the first three years of the machine's service. In any case, there were few boxes of problematic series on the W220, and you can always check by the serial number of the box. For a number of series, the numbers are up to 131-7917, for others up to 132-4240. A less noticeable similar problem was also present at the pump cover. There was also an unreliable bushing, which was again replaced with a bearing during modernization. The chances of encountering a car with a bushing in the rear pump cover are significantly higher than with a drum bushing. The problem does not appear so often, mainly during oil starvation, but if it does happen, it is not recommended to replace the cover separately with a version with a bearing only together with the shaft. Oil entering through the box seal through the wires into the automatic transmission control unit, EGS, is a very common problem. It is necessary to regularly check and change the 192444EM connector with glands inside. If the connectors are oily, then it is necessary to change the wiring and repair the unit. The oil corrodes the plastic and varnish. The most reliable way is to install a new board A1402701162828, a new oil seal and new wiring to replace the oiled one. Of course, they usually manage with more budgetary solutions with the replacement of only the stuffing box. Overrunning clutch failures are also a common problem for production boxes before 2001. Shocks during shifts 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 usually appear precisely because of them. 
On runs of 250 to 300, the age-related features of the automatic transmission begin to appear. Breakdowns of shaft speed sensors are becoming more frequent, which requires repair or replacement of the internal electronics board, the very one through which oil flows into the control unit. Or soldering sensors. On the boxes of examples where the oil was rarely changed and often annealed at high mileage, the gas turbine engine blocking solenoid wears out first, which is initially expressed by shocks when the lock is in cold mode in second gear and higher at moments when the gas turbine engine slip mode is used. The locking clutches themselves can pull a little more, but usually it is their wear that contaminates the oil, and cutting the gas turbine engine is already necessary. The design is quite progressive. The locking package consists of three clutches and four steel rings and therefore lasts quite a long time. If you pull a little more, then one of the three clutches, or more, will wear out to the adhesive layer and dirt will clog the filter and valve body. Some unique ones have managed to bring the box to blows due to the failure of the linear pressure solenoid. Usually when working on dirty oil, it lasts to the last. And that's when the box starts to kick a lot during the switching itself. With powerful engines, there is a chance that the clutches of the K1, K2, and B3 packages will be worn out on boxes after 2001. They are thin and one-sided, and the operating algorithms allow for their smooth engagement even under full thrust. And as a result, they gradually wear out. After 1999, gas turbine engines are supplied without a drain plug, so it has become more difficult to understand how contaminated the oil is. Replacement is also complicated. In order to wash out the accumulation of dirt in the torque converter, a hardware replacement is recommended or simply opening it every time if the oil has darkened. By the way, it is 722.6 that is one of the first officially maintenance-free boxes, so many did not change the oil in them at all. As a result, there are quite a lot of killed options with initially very high quality and a potential resource of up to 400 or more thousand kilometers. And yet, against the general background, 5G Tronic is practically trouble-free. All of his childhood illnesses were cured 20 years ago. Rarely seen on later W220S, the 722.97 speed was another technological breakthrough. The first hard-coupled, mechatronic, very low loss transmission in the size of a 5 speed. But there were more problems at launch than with a 5 speed. Here, the weak body collapsed and the mechatronics broke, and there were no spare parts for a very long time. They brought the design to mind only when they restyled the next S Class W221, and on the W227G Tronic, it's pain and tears, and quite expensive, because both parts and used boxes are twice as expensive at least. The main trouble is overheating right up to 130 degrees, as a result of which not only the internal seals die, but also the box heat exchanger, which leads to antifreeze getting into it and complete failure. Electronics also fly due to temperature. The shaft speed sensors die, the wiring and plastic of the electronics board delaminate from temperature and become brittle. As a result, the entire board often has to be replaced. An identical oil pump from the old 722.6 on a new box suddenly began to work for a maximum of 100,000, after which, almost with a guarantee, a howl and loss of oil pressure began due to a dead shaft bearing. It broke the front part of the box bell with vibrations, cracks are possible on all versions of the automatic transmission that were on the W220 because the problem was fixed only after 2007. The oil pan is delicate any contact with the road is contraindicated for it. Additionally, the box has weak planetary gears, a weak K1 drum in the first versions, just those that were used on the W220, and the gas turbine engine itself serves a maximum of 200,000 before the bulkhead, and the problem is not only in the wear of the blocking linings, but also in vibrations. For this automatic transmission, it is necessary at least to replace the cooling system with a new one, lowering the temperature to 70 to 80 degrees then there will be less trouble the resource of all seals oil pump and electronics will grow strongly well of the advantages of this box only three points with it the car becomes very cheerful compared to the slow 722.6 fuel consumption drops a little and it is also just perfectly diagnosed by the scanner 
rear all-wheel drive cars are no worse than ordinary ones. The transfer case is strong here, except that the front gearbox and its intermediate shaft can cause extra costs. It is necessary to control the condition of the bearings in the cavity of the crankcase of the motor. They are easily rotated, and their resource is not very large due to constant overheating. The front gear seals are also prone to leaks due to temperatures. W220 Finding the perfect car is hard. There are certain chances when searching among options in expensive trim levels after restyling, which have stood all their lives in a warm garage, as well as southern specimens that have not seen snow every year, and then in the mountains. And even there, bugs and minor troubles are possible if the owner did not follow the car. If you are looking in St. Petersburg or Moscow, then it will be either a fresh repaint or an expensive garage car that was hardly used and miraculously preserved. There are no other options. In real operation, the W220 does not survive with us. Even a good owner and with regular anti-corrosion will no longer have a body in factory paint, and its condition will most likely turn out to be unsatisfactory, with a bunch of repaints out of order. Alas, the price of these cars fell sharply immediately with the release of the 221st body, and they were not particularly popular. And since the price is low, there was little point in investing in the body. Even listing potentially problematic points of the body causes an unpleasant feeling of an impending nightmare. The front fenders rot in front of the turn signals, at the bottom of the sill. Doors at the bottom, at the molding, at the door handles, and corrosion points are possible throughout the bottom. The rear arches and fenders are a complete headache. It rots along the edge of the arch itself, along the rear bumper, at the rear lights, around the ventilation shutters. The corrosion of the threshold is also visible from under the plastic lining and in the holes of the tubular jacks. The windshield frame in the upper part on the sides is rusting from the glass and roof molding attachment points. Is that the aluminum hood looks after all this with aristocratic indifference? Depending on how difficult the life of the car was and how much money the owner invested in it, you can find better and worse options. The price often does not really beat with the condition, especially if the car is in the hands of a reseller who took the car cheaply and slightly shamanized appearance. In general, in order to find something relatively alive, you need to review a huge amount of rot, which they won't even take for disassembly. And it would be better to search immediately in warm regions, checking PTS for registrations in more northern regions. This will increase the chances from January 10th or less to an acceptable April 10th or even May 10th. True, the number of criminal options is also very large, and the further south, the more there are. Problems start right from import using gray schemes, underestimation of the volume of engines, replacement of bodies, customs clearance for veterans, and through the courts. More recent cars were imported by designers and cuts, and completely new ones through Armenia and Abkhazia. It would be nice to know what font the VIN number has when choosing. By the way, it is located here in an original way under the rear seat, under the seat of the right rear passenger, there is a hatch for the SAM rear unit, there is access to the fuses, and at the same time you can see the VIN. Experts will certainly check all identification plates, and it is better if they are original. At the same time, it makes sense to check the chassis number, wired in the control unit, with that indicated in the TCP. Even if outwardly the car does not look like complete trash, then an inspection on a lift is still required. The main problem areas are not even the thresholds and arches, which rot in the first place, but the glasses of the front suspension. Boiled glasses are not so scary if everything is done well, and the damage was in the front, not the power part of the anther. For a cheap car, this is an acceptable option, especially if there are no traces of new rust and the seams are well covered with sealant. But, of course, if you are looking for a dream car even after restyling, and the price is more than 350000 then, having seen traces of repairs, it is better to turn around and forget. The attachment points of the rear subframe are also an important part of the body, especially since the panel with the VIN is next to it, it is worth inspecting at least for welding nearby and the integrity of the seams. It is imperative to check the over-engine niche. If there is water here, then all the electronics of the engine and box are in danger and something must have flowed into the cabin. 
Niche drain valves are extremely unfortunate in the U.S. Companies have even served a class action lawsuit on this issue. Rubber bands are best removed just in case at all. Well, if there is rust at the seams of the partition of the over-engine niche and glasses, or the sealant is raised at the seams with the junction of the engine shield, then the car is definitely not a tenant. There will be no rigidity of the body at all, and such problems are essentially not amenable to solution. The insides of all wheel arches and sills are another consistently problematic area. Even if nothing is visible from the outside, there may be perforations under the lockers and holes in the threshold at the amplifier from below. In the most neglected specimens, rust sticks out from under the rear bumper in a circle, from under the plastic threshold, and the edge of the arch may already valve. Places of tubular jacks simply attract corrosion, and it is very difficult to digest this zone. With an endoscope, you can often find a lot of interesting things inside the thresholds, kilograms of rusty debris, collective farm anti-corrosive working off, the absence of internal amplifiers, welded pipes, and the like folk art. In general, in terms of the body, the car is very problematic. The stereotypes do not lie here. Good news, there is a lot of iron here, and usually everything does not rot at once. If the car was anti-corrosive with the right, non-hardening compositions and the internal cavities were spilled with at least something useful, then at least there will be something to boil. And donors are in excellent condition, a lot for a penny. From the Emirates and the Far East they bring very low-cost newscats, quarters, and any body elements up to the original windshields. Prices for new original components contrast sharply with the market value of the cars themselves. Keyless entry buttons for 50,000, new headlights for 150 apiece, this is not the worst thing. Bumpers consist of a bunch of small parts, linings and fasteners that break and are very expensive. Often bumpers are held together with self-tapping screws, sealant and epoxy, pay attention to such things. And by the way, even if you have money, it is far from certain that you will be able to find the missing parts, the offer is small, the delivery time is long and not everything is in stock. The headlights of cars before restyling had a glass cover, and it consistently turned yellow. Special polishing with balls, tumbling, helps, and the headlight itself is disassembled. The main thing is not to break the delicate plastic latches. Well, inside there are usually fading lenses of xenon or even halogen lamps. Headlight mounts also break easily. Working headlight blades? If they exist, then this is already half the way to collectible status. After restyling, the cars have a plastic cap and the brushes were replaced with a washer nozzle. The system turned out to be more reliable, however, it works worse and nozzle covers are easily lost in winter. In addition, they can become clogged with scale from the tank, which is made heated here and needs periodic rinsing with citric acid. The wipers are quite strong, but over time, the contact of the position sensor begins to fail, you have to catch the parking position, and on the doorest, the brushes are also rare. Cable windows do not differ in excess of reliability. Over time, the cable breaks, and replacement is associated either with jewelry winding of the cable, which is practiced on cheap cars, or installing a new riveting mechanism, which is more expensive, but easier. The locks are strong, although the handle cables sometimes break. If the car has regular trunk hinges, then just keep an eye on the safety of the gas stops if they loosen, the knife hinges allow the heavy cover to hit the lock hard. And if there is a hydraulic drive, then it does not hurt to check the presence of fluid in the drive and the condition of the brushes. The motor is on the right in the trunk niche near the battery and is easily accessible. The side windows here are double, but not like a double glazed window on the W140, but rather like a sandwich, and it sometimes delaminates. The rear window is also double, and if the heating filaments burn out, then this problem cannot be solved without replacing the glass. The rear curtain often comes across in a non-working state, the rear side ones break much less often. The hood lock is a rather capricious thing, either the cables turn sour, or the emergency blocker rusts, or the handle breaks. In general, there are a lot of different small things in the car, which breaks down and is replaced by a good owner, and often breaks down by a bad owner and never changes. With the interior, the same trouble as with other equipment. 
there are a lot of things that can be broken, although everything was done with high quality. In fact, for a normal owner with a run of under 300,000, the interior may be almost ideal. The build quality of Mercedes in those years was simply excellent, and you most likely won't distinguish 500,000 from 150,000 on the odometer if you haven't seen a really fresh car with its textured leather and the perfect shine of all panels. The dashboard backlight often goes out this problem is relatively easily solved by replacing the controller. Weak lining of the front seats, they break at the slightest contact, even for careful drivers. New parts are fortunately inexpensive. The buttons in the doors lose their top soft touch coating. The greasy sheen appears it runs up to 100 if the glass and seat adjustment buttons were used regularly. Striping screens of the air conditioning system are a cheap misfortune, but quite frequent. A failed air pump for seats in the trunk is a common cause of inoperability of seat support adjustments, poor operation of locks, they also have a pneumatic drive, inoperability of the massage system and headrest reclining control. A new pump costs more than 40000 a used one can be found for 15 The most common reason is a rotten wing and flooded wiring and worn brushes. When the current is exceeded, the 15A fuse burns out, which is changed to 20A which is quite safe if you do not install Chinese. Sometimes the cause of a pump failure is an air leak. For example, in the trunk lock drive, it is also pneumatic. By the way, if you put a restyled lock on a door style, then it will not work normally. The restyling also has a handle that extends pneumatically, so the operation algorithm will fail. It can be blocked forever, and you will have to unlock it with a spoke through the mounting holes of the trunk emblem. Seat ventilation is implemented by a bunch of small fans, it turned out to be noisy and weak. The heating mats are weak, it is contraindicated even for a child to stand on the seats with his feet. In climate control, the most unpleasant trouble is the breakdown of the stove valve block. It is located in the wing niche and turns sour, the wiring to the solenoids rots, and as a result, neither heat nor cold can be set in the car. The air conditioner is quite reliable. If the car has not been beaten and components have not been removed, then the main problem is leaks from the refrigerant circuit due to the second condenser and tubes on long wheelbase machines. The compressor itself is quite strong, and the drive clutch most often fails in it. Corrosion of tubes is also a frequent problem, but by and large it can be solved, since there is a choice of used parts and argon welding. In general, the state of the salon is about the attitude of the former owners and the quality of care. Often, one look at the interior allows you to understand that you should not buy a car. However, for some reason the reverse option does not work. The car has a lot of electrical problems. For example, the search for current leaks has long become a sports discipline among owners. Often, when dry cleaning, they fill in the main SAM unit at the back, which stands next to the VIN under the rear seat. It happens that the front one also suffers from water. This happens if the car stands with the hood open in the rain, there is no plug in the water conduit in the hood, or the block body is broken. Fortunately, it is quite realistic to find a replacement dry block, and even rebinding is possible without the involvement of official dealers. The can bus gateways on the machines after the restyling turned out to be a rather capricious thing, multiplying problems with the blocks. The lock block, both on door style and on restyling, can lose the key this is treated by removing the block with subsequent flashing. This is relatively easy to do, just remove the top of the center console. The keyless entry system has a separate control unit if it fails, it can be resoldered if you find a specialist. About 10 years ago this was a serious problem, and many W220S went out into the cold from a warm garage because they refused to start at the right moment. Occupancy sensors fail over time and give belt errors. Air conditioning fans are not very reliable, but even here the problem is most often in the control unit. Even with a slight deterioration in fan performance, the controller in the unit burns out. You can pick up a cheaper analog from the C-Class W203, and there is exactly the same control unit. It is not only cheaper, but also lasts longer, because the 203rd fan has less load on it. The control unit for the front cabin fan also dies, but replacing the transistors solves the problem. 
The fan itself serves more than 200,000 mileage and is relatively easy to change. On long wheelbase cars, there is also a rear climate control unit in the center console. It serves no less, but any noise from its fan is very clearly audible. Wiring is a total headache. A very weak trunk harness dies already it runs over 100, but how it is made on cars with under 400 mileage is a big question. With the door wiring, the problem is the same, it's not clear what the electricians did there. The chances that the wiring is native are very small. The wiring under the bottom, to the pneumatic sensors, to the shock absorber valves, to the parking sensors and fog lights, simply rots at the connectors and kinks. If the body is in poor condition or the car has been open for a long time, then there are chances that the harnesses inside the body are also damaged. Moreover, body services manage to damage even the optical tires to the blocks in the trunk. In general, we can say that there are really a lot of problems. If the car is badly killed, then there is no point in restoring all the electric giblets. If we are talking about the failure of individual elements such as control units, then, as a rule, all of them are maintainable. As a last resort, there is still a choice of used parts for a penny.